The question says ABC is an equilateral triangle. P and Q are two points on AB and AC respectively, such that PQ is parallel to BC. And if PQ is 5, the area of triangle APQ is. So let's consider an equilateral triangle, right? ABC is an equilateral triangle. So let's take that. So this is A, B, C, which is an equilateral triangle. All three sides are equal. Now he says P and Q are two points on AB and AC. So let's say this is the point P on AB and Q is the point on AC, such that PQ is parallel to BC. So you must consider the points in such a way that PQ will be parallel to BC. So see, PQ is parallel to BC. All right. And PQ is 5. This length is given as 5. PQ is 5. What is the area of the triangle? APQ. So we need to find out the area of this triangle, APQ. Right? Area of the triangle, APQ. What do we do? See, very simple. You know that this triangle is an equal to the triangle, which means each angle is 60 degrees. This is 60. This is 60. Angle A also will be 60. More importantly, since PQ is parallel to BC, we can say even APQ will become an equilateral triangle. So this will be 60 degrees. All the three angles will be 60 degrees here. Each of these angles would be 60 degrees. Angle A, angle P, and angle Q. This is the concept of that parallel lines, right? PQ and BC are two parallel lines. And we can say AB is a transversal. Or we can say AC is a transversal. So the point is, since this angle is 60 degrees, this also will be 60. This angle here will also be 60. And these two are 60 implies angle A will also be 60. So basically, triangle APQ is also equilateral. And it, it, it need not be uh, concluded by drawing a diagram, right? You can understand if one line is parallel to the base there, obviously the upper triangle will also be equilateral. That's it. So area of triangle APQ. How do you get the area of an equilateral triangle? root 3 by 4 a square where a is the side what is the side of this triangle 5 so root 3 by 4 5 square so that comes out to be 25 root 3 by 4 25 root 3 by 4 option 3 the external bisector of angle b and angle c of triangle abc where ab and ac are extended to e and f respectively meet at point p so let's consider a triangle abc right this is a b and c triangle abc now the external bisector of angle b and angle c of the triangle abc where ab and ac are extended so ab is extended let's extend ab and ac is also extended so let us extend ac right so extend ac so ab and ac are extended so this is the angle b external angle b and this is the external angle c now they're bisectors so let's say external angle b is bisector is this and external angle C is bisector is this. They meet at a point P. They meet at point P. This is point P. He's asking us to find out. Uh, he says if angle BAC, angle BAC is what? 100 degrees. If angle BAC is 100 degrees, then the measure of angle BPC, this angle is equal to what? Now, if you go by that property, like I told you, angle BPC will be equal to 90 degrees minus half of angle BAC. That's it. Just apply that. And you'll be able to get the answer 90 minus half of angle BAC is how much 100 so half of 100 is 50 90 minus 50 will give you 40 degrees 40 degrees option four option three will be the answer all right so very simple one option three 40 degrees so just remember those properties otherwise you'll have to do a lot of uh, analysis here like for example let's say this is you know uh, let's say this is angle uh, small b and this angle is small c Right? This is small b and small c. So we can say that b plus c, if you if you don't go by the formula, then what happens? Let us look at the other way of solving this question. Let's say you don't remember the formula in the exam or you're not aware of this, then what do you do? So then we have to follow something like this. Let us say the internal angle b is small b, internal angle c is small c. Now, uh, 100 plus b plus c should be 180 because sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180. So we can conclude b plus c equals to 80 degrees. That is point number one. Now, what will be the external angle? Let's say this is like uh, external angle is B dash and this external angle is C dash complete, right? B dash and C dash. So we can say B dash is equal to 180 degrees. Sorry, uh, B dash here. Yeah. B dash is equal to 180 degrees minus B because see, this is a straight angle, right? A straight angle. Straight angle is 180. So from 180, if you subtract B, we will get the remaining angle. So B dash is 180 minus B. What about C dash? C dash can be taken as 180 degrees minus C. 
So we can conclude that B dash plus C dash is equal to 180 degrees minus B plus 180 degrees minus C. So this comes out to be 360 degrees minus of B plus C. B plus C we have already calculated. How much is that? 80. You're getting it? B plus is 80. So substitute that 80 here, right? So after substituting, what do we get? B dash plus C dash is equal to 360 minus 80, which is 280 degrees, right? Now the point is complete B dash plus complete C dash is equal to 280. See, if you look at this angle, this is B dash by 2. And this angle, it is C dash by 2. Why? These are angular bisectors. Yes or no? These are angular bisectors. So we can now conclude that B dash, I mean, the third part is here. Right, B dash plus C dash by 2 is equal to 280 by 2, which is 140 degrees. Yes or no? B dash by 2 plus C dash by 2, 140. So sum of these two is 140. So angle B, P, C can now be taken as sum of all the three internal angles has to be 180, right? So 180 minus 140. 180 degrees minus 140. You're getting it? The complete angle B dash, complete angle C dash is 280. We want half of that, half of their sums. So half of 280 will come out to be 140. So these two internal angles are 140 now. Third angle has to be 40 degrees because 140 plus 40 will make it 180. So this comes out to be 40 degrees. But if you want to avoid all this nonsense in the exam, you'll have to remember this formula, right? Related to in center. 